All right, in today's video, I'm going to be changing the seals on this Sea Star um, hydraulic steering. Uh, the folks down at uh, Marine Tech Tools uh, were good enough to actually send me some of the tools that I would need to use this. First thing I'm going to do is loosen the seal up uh, using this removal tool. Now, I particularly like this one. A lot of the ones that you'll see have two, two points. This one has actually three, so you can get this on there pretty solid. Now, before I crack any of this, we're going to get some leakage. This stuff does stain fiberglass, I can tell you from personal experience. So to help protect the boat, I'm going to use a puppy training pad, actually, to uh, get that underneath the area we'll be working. And um, that should at least give us a little bit of protection. And I've got a little cup here that I'm going to use to catch any uh, drippage. All right, so I've got the seal removal tool. And I'm gonna do this first for the simple reason that if we loosen everything up before we do this, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to, to crack this and get it off. So we wanna be careful, make sure it doesn't slide off. I'll put some pressure on it. And it did slide off, but it doesn't look like it hurt anything. And this should get to the point where we can hand loosen it. Now I'll go ahead and do the other side. So to break the bolts off the back, having an extra set of hands is definitely uh, helpful in this situation. What we're doing here is basically maneuvering these nuts so that we can break them loose and hopefully break them both loose at the same time, which uh, we have in this case. What I'm doing is actually holding the bar. Now, you don't want to use a vice grip, um, although I have seen where people will use a leather strap or a rubber strap with a vice grip to hold it. I'm using my hands just to hold the uh, rod steady so that it doesn't get marred or anything by using something else. So at this point, we've gotten both of the nuts off and we're going to be taking the support bracket off next. Three quarter inch socket. So I was lucky. Um, basically, I just hit this with a brass punch and it popped right out. Marine Tech has a tool which makes it a lot easier when these things are frozen, which in many cases they will be. And I'll show you how this works. Now, there's two possible configurations. One of them is if you have the older one, like I do here. You can see it pulling out. But what will happen with the older one is it's going to grab the sides of it like so. And, and might gouge it a little bit so you have to be prepared and be warned for that however on the newer brackets the tips of this will engage and then you can pull the whole thing out using the uh, the vice action so what this does now these are the spacers that are in there so as I push this through you can see the other side is just sliding off right there. So now we have access to the seals. So let's go ahead and get those off. The old ones. There we go. Now at this point you can slide it out to inspect it, which is not a bad idea. 
When you're putting the new seals on, one of the things you want to do is use this protective cap. And that keeps the thread from mooring the, uh, new, uh, the new seal. basically going to hand tighten this and then we'll use the uh, special tool to torque it. So one thing I wanted to point out, I did get these uh, these seals from um, uh, Marine Tech and um, they actually do have them at a very reasonable price. I'll put links to all these tools that, that we're using here and the uh, comment section below as well as links to their website so now that we have this seals back on I'm going to slide the end piece back on let's get that off before reassembling everything you should add a layer of grease to the support shaft as well as to the ends of the steering cylinder shaft this started we'll do the same to the other side basically we're going to do this in the reverse order that that we took it off in and the reason I'm putting everything back together before tightening this is because this will actually hold everything together while we apply 60 pounds of uh, torque to that which is what a uh, what C Star recommends. Get these back on. And again, another pair of hands helps in tightening this up. So, again, this was 5 8. The uh, socket that we used for this was three quarters and we got one more thing that we got to do before we go any further. But I'm going to change the o-rings on this as long as we got this apart using a half inch wrench. We're going to go ahead and uh, replace the o-rings. Our rim seems to be in decent condition, but uh, as long as we have it off, it's not a bad idea. So your seal kit's going to come with a bunch of various O-rings, but you can tell the size, which would be this, these right here. And I would not use a steel pick to take the old one off. If you have a plastic pick or a brass pick, you're better off. You don't want to scratch. Scratch that steel. I'm just going to use my fingernail. Just comparing the old one to the new one, make sure it's right. And I'll use a little bit of the fluid that came out just to wet it, lubricate it a little bit. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. I've got the torque wrench set to 60 foot pounds. This is going to be probably an approximation because there's so many different physics involved in here. And of course, constantly being careful not to slip off
So here's what I got. This is one of the tools that's available from my Marine Tech. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook these up like so. Put one on the other side. And we're going to purge each of these cylinders of air. To do these, open up those valves by a quarter to a half turn. And you can see us doing that here. Getting a quarter turn on these. Maybe a little bit less, but a quarter to a half turn will do it for you. All right, so here's the second part. This is going to be the fill hose that we're going to use to add fluid to the helm. And one of the things I'm going to do, with two parts to this. There's uh, the hose itself, of course, which attaches to the, uh, to the hydraulic fluid. And this is the piece that attaches to the helm. Um, half inch, if I'm not mistaken. But what I'm going to do... It's going to purge some of the air out of the hose to start with. But I'm just going to make sure that there's some fluid in the hose. And then I'm going to pop this piece off because that will stop any more fluid from coming out. So we've got most of the, most of the hose full with uh, fluid. So what I've done is I've, uh, of course, disconnected this. I'm going to put this in the helm. I've actually put a little bit of fluid on it already, just so we get a good seal. And tighten that in there. That is a 9 16 not a half inch, like I said earlier. Once we get that piece attached to the helm, the next thing we're going to do is snap in the hose from the uh, hydraulic fluid bottle. Now, one thing to make note of, a lot of instructions that you'll see on filling these things advise you to poke a pinhole basically in the bottom of the bottle. You really don't have to do that with this because what's going to happen is as you purge the air out of the system, it's going to go back into the bottle. So poking a hole in the bottle is not necessary and it also makes the bottle unusable. What I'm doing this is I'm turning this to port slowly. This is basically going to fill the starboard side of the ram with fluid and it's going to push the air out into the port side and it's going to come back through the system and up into the bottle. So I'll give this about 30 turns uh, towards port and um, as I do this I'll stop periodically and you'll be able to see some air um, basically coming back up into the bottle. Now looking at this shot you'll see the air being purged out of the starboard side and into the uh, port side and again then it's coming back through the hose and back up into the helm. Now, once you get 30 turns completed to port, you probably want to do about 30 turns to starboard and um, basically uh, do the same thing over again. Uh, I actually ended up doing it twice, uh, 30 times in each direction. Uh, again, it's a little tedious, but it does work and it does flush the air out of the system. Here, I'm turning it towards starboard to flush the other side of the system. And what I'll end up doing is going 30 turns in each direction you can see the air flushing back out of the system here out of the uh basically out of the port side and towards the starboard side of the uh of the ram you'll uh do this several times uh 30 turns in each direction and you can actually monitor the hose that's tied to the ram itself or to the steering mechanism as well as what's coming back up into the uh, helm as you can see here and basically 30 turns in each direction twice should flush the system of all the air and uh, but if you see any air bubbles you can continue to do this until you don't see any more and here what i'm doing is just a few final turns making sure that there's no air in the system um, really ensuring that it's all purged out once that's done what i'll do is i'll close up those brass nipples in the back those valves disconnect the hose seal everything up and then just test it and make sure there's no side to side play well, that's it. We've got the seals replaced. Uh, we've purged all the air out of the system using the tools from Marine Tech. And a special thank you to them for sending them to me, especially to Matt, and who also sent me this hat, which I think is really cool. And I'll be using it when I take the boat out. Anyway, if you like this video, hit share and like. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit this button right here. Thanks for watching.